Shinigami in the Ninja World Author Bleem Please support original author Chapter 10 Shirkai Walking out of the Hokage building Naruto glanced at the ninja beside him wearing a green vest feeling a bit complicated Thank you, Iruka sensei Don't mention it Iruka replied giving him a thumbs up It's because you're truly remarkable, Naruto Why did you do it, Iruka sensei? Naruto asked you thought I made a mistake, didn't you? Moreover, Sensei, you know the rumors that I am a demon fox. Irika's expression turned nostalgic. A demon fox, huh? Do you know in fact we are very similar? I'm also an orphan. During my time at the Ninja Academy, I always did exaggerated, foolish things to get attention. But I was very miserable then. I couldn't help but cry every night in my empty room. Saying this, he looked down at Naruto. But Naruto, you must have suffered more than I did. I was just ignored. But you had to endure so much abuse. It's my fault for not doing enough before. Despite my own experiences, I didn't take good care of your feelings. Naruto turned away, hiding his slightly reddened eyes. Iruka raised his hand, placing it on Naruto's head, his tone becoming passionate. In fact, you're much better than me. I only learned to improve myself after graduating with the guidance of senpais and the Hokage, and through various experiences. But you're already doing that, Naruto. As your teacher, I'm really outshined by you. Naruto grinned with a chuckle. That's the way to smile, Iruka said, giving him a gentle pat. You haven't smiled like that in a while. And you should keep smiling like that. He continued seriously. Although they all say that, I think the rumor is unreliable. In my eyes, you're not a demon fox. You're just Naruto. Uzumaki Naruto, a brilliant student whom I recognize, who will surely become a great ninja in the future. Just like... At this, Iruka paused, turning to gaze at the distant mountain with the four Hokage heads carved into it. He resumed, his tone solemn and respectful, as if declaring an inevitable future, a heartfelt promise. Just like the fourth Hokage, a great and outstanding ninja, Naruto followed Iruka's gaze, his great and outstanding father on the mountain. He began to feel a bit averse to the words great and outstanding. After eating Ichiraku ramen, invited by Iruka sensei, Naruto returned home. The newly acquired multiple shadow clone technique remained unpracticed for the moment. Scenes from the day replayed in his mind. His view of Saratobi Hiruzen remained unchanged, although the third Hokage might not be as bad as he thought, and his attitude toward Naruto might not be entirely feigned. Part of his care was genuine, but he was indeed hiding very important information from Naruto. Iruka sensei's behavior was unexpected. So, there are still people in Kanoha who truly care about him. This village doesn't seem so bad after all, but he still wanted to return to the Soul Society. Kanoha has only one Iruka, but the Shino Academy has many. In these days, he still hadn't encountered his long-missed Shinigami colleagues. Tomorrow is the team assignment day. Maybe. After becoming an official ninja, with more active areas, there will be a greater chance. For some reason, Naruto felt a vague unease about the relationship between Kanoha and the Soul Society. This restlessness prompted him to pick up the sword hanging on the wall. During school, he hadn't carried it, as the academy didn't allow weapons other than kanai and shuriken. He only practiced Sanjutsu for a short time every morning after waking up. Since he was uneasy, he decided to use training to dissipate this inner turmoil. This was Naruto's usual way to manage his emotions. But just as he touched the sword, the appearance of the sword suddenly changed. The length remained the same, still a katana. But the blade turned a dark, ominous red. A fluffy, long red ribbon dangled from the end of the hilt. A surge of inexplicable knowledge emerged in his mind. It was an incantation. This sudden change stunned Naruto. A name. He had learned the name of the Nine Tails. Knowing its name, mastering its power. So, it wasn't necessary for the Zampakudo to tell him its name directly. Knowing it from someone else could also release and use its power? He grasped the hilt. The feeling was completely different from holding the Dasachi before. Heartbeats, life, flesh trembling. This sword was an extension of his chakra and soul. 
Undoubtedly, this was the change of the Zampakuto's initial release. But, isn't the Nine Tails the monster seal within me? How could it become my Shirkai, my inner power? Naruto sat cross-legged, placing the sword on his lap. During the practice of Blade Zen, he entered that dark, underground sewer within his heart. Kid, long time no see. The Nine Tails squinted its eyes, looking at the unusually solemn blonde boy, and greeted him with a surprisingly cheerful tone. It seems you're not in a good state. Since the day it's said, you are the fourth son, Naruto hadn't come back. It eagerly awaited to see how much devastation this news would bring to the young lad. Is your name Nine Tails? Naruto looked up and asked. The Nine Tails wasn't surprised, so, are you still expecting that nonsense? Zampakuto trick? It grinned menacingly, eyes filled with cruelty. Nine Tails was indeed the name it was called most often. But besides the other eight tailed beasts, who would think that each tailed beast once had a family member who gave it a proper name? Perhaps the Zampakuto is real. But the name Nine Tails is not real. The collapse of the boy's spiritual pillar would be a beautiful thing. The Zampakuto has achieved Shirkai. Naruto stepped forward, examining it. I released your restraints. Feel it for yourself. The Nine Tails was stunned, sensing with its scattered chakra. That weird sword had a completely different appearance now, though that was the smallest change. It was no longer composed solely of Naruto's energy, but also contained a part of its own. Together, they had forged this sword. How fascinating. It praised with a peculiar gleam in its eyes. It's real. I didn't even feel my power being taken away. What's the principle behind this? Naruto clenched his fist, speaking to himself. The Soul Society is not fake. I hate you, Nine Tails. Because of you, so many people have hated me since I was a child. Because of you, my father sacrificed himself for the village. I still don't understand why you were sealed inside me. And I don't understand why you, who were sealed, became my inner strength. He raised his fist high, the mist of confusion in his mind dissipating at that moment. If I don't understand, then so be it. I will make good use of your power. I will find my father, find my mother, and then I'll understand everything. The nine tails swayed its tail, golden eyes fixed on Naruto. This guy's character is nothing like Minato's, more like that red-haired spitfire. Is that so? It chuckled. Then let me see how far you can go. Dark red chakra surged. It didn't mind its power being borrowed by Naruto. Haven't all previous Jinshuriki done the same? Compared to them, Naruto was even more interesting. A new world, a hero abandoned by the village. The Nine Tails was already looking forward to how the chaotic future would unfold. Naruto said no more and exited his inner world. When he opened his eyes, he was no longer in the tidy little room he had organized himself. He was in a classroom. In front of him was a familiar teacher. He had returned. He had returned to the Soul Society. The teacher immediately noticed Naruto opening his eyes and the changes in the sword on his lap. Naruto, did you hear your Zampakuto's name? The teacher didn't hide the surprise in his tone. He had just entered Blade Zen and already heard his Zampakuto's name, mastering Shirkai. A genius, is that it? Naruto didn't answer immediately, looking around blankly. After scanning the classroom, he found nothing had changed. No one seemed puzzled by his disappearance or reappearance. His gaze finally rested on the teacher's surprised face. A surprise solely due to the changes in his Zampakuto. Just like in Kanoha, time seemed to have stopped at the moment he left. Why? No time to think about it. Naruto nodded and answered the previous question. Teacher, I think I have learned Shirkai. The students who had not yet entered the state of Blade Zen could not help but look over upon hearing these words. Almost everyone, Blade Zen is not a simple practice. Most Shinigami require years of training to master it. They had only just received their Zampakuto. Achieving success would not be easy. I have already set high expectations for you, but the reality has surprised me even more. The teacher smiled. What is the name of your sword? Nine Tails. Naruto replied. The teacher turned and instructed the others. You all study by yourselves. I will take Naruto out for a moment. 
Someone boldly raised their hand. Teacher, we also want to see Naruto's release. Focus on your practice, the teacher sternly denied. This is not a trivial matter. He did not give the students a chance to continue pleading and let Naruto out. They went to the gymnasium. Dinaku was also called over. Some Shinigami responsible for recording, verifying, and evaluating were also present. The setup did not seem like a simple observation. Naruto, do not be nervous, the teacher reassured him. As I said earlier, mastering the Shirkai is enough for graduation. Dean Haku and other staff are here to verify and record this matter. Just perform normally. Naruto took a deep breath, gripped the sword hilt, and drew it. The dark red blade was deep yet striking. He solemnly recited the incantation from his mind. The nine tails sealed within his body only now felt the change brought by being in a different world as the spiritual power surged. A power completely different from chakra was awakened within him. Eve, the very essence of his being seemed to no longer be chakra. Naruto's voice echoed in its ears. Rage, pain, fear, corruption. Hear the wailing bloom. Demon Fox Nine Tails, a massive, scarlet, and heavy spiritual pressure radiated from Naruto as its center. The Shinigami in charge of verification took a step back. Is this the Shirkai? What kind of release phrase is that? The intensity of the spiritual pressure was within their expectations. After all, it was spiritual power fifth rank, stronger than many present, and the Shirkai further enhanced the spiritual power. But what was with this sword? It gave them an extremely ominous and dangerous feeling. Even their emotions were slightly affected by the spiritual pressure, planting a seed of weariness and lethargy within them. Naruto's outward appearance did not change much. He was enveloped in a dark red, lava-like transparent spiritual power, with two ear-like energy projections standing on his head, and a long, thick tail swaying behind him, resembling a fox. His bright blue eyes turned red, with vertical slit pupils, also fox-like. Naruto, does your sword have any special abilities? Dean Haku inquired. Naruto shook his wrist, the blade moving with it. It enhances my body and spiritual power. Beyond that, it seems there is nothing else. Dean Haku nodded. A Zampakuto that enhances the body? That suited Naruto well. His talent in Kido was far inferior to his talent in Hakuta and Zanjutsu. Naruto felt the power within him. He discovered that what was displayed seemed to be just the tip of the iceberg. Dean Haku, it seems I can become even stronger. Become stronger? Dean Haku did not understand Naruto's meaning. He even found the statement a bit frightening. What did it mean to become stronger? Beyond the Shirkai, that would be the Bankai. Even if one met the captain's spiritual power requirements, learning Bankai would take hundreds of years. Instant mastery? He had just learned Shirkai. Impossible. Naruto took a deep breath, mobilizing the Nine Tails' power within his body. The spiritual pressure grew even stronger. A second tail appeared on the spiritual power cloak. The ribbon attached to the Zampakuto's hilt split and extended into a fluffy second strand. Oh, a second form? Dean Haku breathed a sigh of relief, understanding now. A Shinigami nearby muttered, Nine Tails? Nine? Could it be Naruto? that your sword can release up to nine tails? It was not hard to guess from the name. Naruto nodded. It seems so. Shall I give it a try? Dean Haku hurriedly stopped him. Wait. First, confirm whether your body can handle it. He had lived for many years and had never seen a Zampakuto that could change forms and enhance power after the Shirkai, but was not a Bankai. Certainly, the abilities of the Zampakuto are diverse and extraordinary, so it's not surprising to encounter such an anomaly. But he understood, power often comes with a price. Since the Shirkai originally had only one tail, it proves that the current power is most suitable for Naruto. If he goes further, there may be some cost to pay. Naruto obediently nodded. He checked his body, and after a while, shook his head. There's no discomfort. Just a bit hyper, with an impulse to fight. Hyper impulse. For battle, this isn't a negative effect. In fact, it could be seen as a positive state. Moreover, in the entire Godii 13, 
there are quite a few such battle maniacs. They are in a state of extreme hyperactivity and impulsiveness every day. It's not much of a price to pay. Then keep trying, Dean Haku said softly pleased. Naruto nodded and took a light breath. A third tail swung out. The hilt also split out a third fluffy ribbon. A slight change occurred. The spiritual power cloak covering his body became more intense, no longer as transparent. The spiritual pressure fluctuations grew more intense. The observing Shinigami couldn't help but take another step back. This sword is really powerful, someone remarked. This sense of oppression had only been felt from a few veteran vice captains. A newly enrolled trainee Shinigami with such spiritual pressure. Truly remarkable. How do you feel now? Dinaku asked again. Naruto felt it out. About the same as before, just more hyper. A buzzing sound was in his ears. Like some chaotic, indistinct roars mixed together. Urging him to draw his sword and slash at anything around him. His body also had this instinctive impulse. But he could still control it. No physical issues? Dean Haku asked with concern. Naruto shook his head. No burden. Then continue to try. The moment these words were spoken, the fourth tail stretched out. The spiritual power cloak covering Naruto underwent a drastic change. From a semi-transparent dark red to a completely opaque deep red. It was as if the spiritual power had come to life and swallowed Naruto. That sense of ominousness and danger grew stronger. The crowd was horrified, as if they had a thorn in their back. In their sight, Naruto raised his sword and swallowed the Zampakuto adorned with four ribbons. The spiritual pressure became even stronger. Then his stance changed, no longer standing like a human, but crouching all fours on the ground like a beast. His eyes showed no pupils, only two bright circles of white light. Dean Haku felt a jolt in his heart, a bad premonition. Naruto, he tentatively called. But what greeted him was a roar from the spiritual power monster that had swallowed Naruto. Immediately, there was a sound of an air explosion, and it disappeared from its original spot. Careful, he's lost control, Dean Haku loudly warned. He thought of the emotions that had affected him at the beginning. He recalled Naruto's mention of impulse. Indeed, just as he initially anticipated, this sword's liberation of its tails comes with a cost. However, the cost is not spiritual power or the body, but rationality. As soon as the words fell, the tail Naruto had already pounced in front of a Shinigami, his claws swiping, stirring up a fierce wind. Boom! Although that Shinigami abandoned chanting at the critical moment and used Bakudo number 8. Seiki, repulse gathering spiritual power into a cluster to withstand most of the damage. Even the aftermath sent him flying, embedding him firmly into the wall. Naruto's speed is that fast, a Shinigami exclaimed. Such strength? He remembered Naruto's Shuenpo wasn't at that level. The Shinigami in the wall was in a sorry state, bleeding from the head. It seems that sword strengthens him in all aspects, not just spiritual pressure, but also strength, speed, and more. Dean Haku frowned. First, we need to control him. Be careful not to hurt him too badly. Did you call for backup? Dean Haku shouted with delight. The Shinigami who had first been slammed into the wall responded. I already did. Looking at Naruto, standing in the center of the gymnasium, Dean Haku's expression was complicated, and he had to admit that he had spoken a bit too loudly earlier. What nonsense like, don't let him get too badly injured. Bah, that was just thoughtless drivel. Facing someone of this terror level, it was already chaotic enough for them to just protect themselves. It's not that Naruto's current strength far surpassed the combined efforts of several high-ranking lieutenants. It's just, his combat logic was completely different from any creature they had encountered before, whether Shinigami or Hollow. After his first attack, rampaging Naruto abandoned his high-mobility advantage and rooted himself in place. This was very unwise turning him into a target. Yet this did not give Dean Haku and the others an advantage. That sword brought significant enhancement. The red spiritual power cloak was not just for show. It had extremely strong defensive power. Any Hado below number 10 couldn't break through that red cloak. Even Hado below number 30 
without incantation, could only create a few cracks. Only high-level keto, with complete incantation, could cause minimal damage. This was the result Dean Haku initially hoped for. But, with his extreme healing speed, those minor skin and flesh wounds healed in an instant, as if they had never appeared. Moreover, even while standing still, Naruto possessed formidable attack capabilities. He inserted his hand into the ground. The entire gymnasium seemed to become his territory. Red hands, formed from condensed spiritual power, could rise from any unexpected area to launch attacks. The lava-like spiritual power was not just for appearance. It truly possessed the properties of lava, with extremely strong burning and corrosive effects. Upon discovering this property, Dean Haku and the others tried to dodge as much as possible to avoid severe injury. The gymnasium was in ruins. Those few pits, these skylights. Principal, I can't take it anymore. A Shinigami drew his sword, his tone heavy. If this continues, it might endanger the other students. He was ready to release his Zampakuto. Without release, it would be very difficult to suppress Naruto in this state. The backup is too slow, another Shinigami complained. It had already been almost five or six minutes. Dean Haku was about to respond when a voice, calm in tone but flippant in content, came from the skylight. Ah, this is so annoying. When will the 10th Division pick a captain? I still have to handle this. Dean Haku looked up sharply, delight in his eyes. Captain Hirako. The speaker was a man with long, golden hair, wearing the captain's Hayori, with a tie under his kimono, slouching and looking both contemptuous and restless. Behind him followed a man with plain black-rimmed glasses and unassuming brown hair, looking harmless. Vice Captain Aizen. Shinji Hirako clicked his tongue. It's been wrecked like this, huh? That rampaging student is the fox monster? The spiritual pressure is really... scary. He raised his hand. Inside the gymnasium, rampaging Naruto also noticed the threat from above. His biological instincts told him. Freeemvil.com. Both the blonde man and the brown-haired man beside him were extremely dangerous. Swoosh, swoosh. Two lava-like red tails shot up. Captain, watch out. So Sake, Aizen rushed out urgently, abandoning the incantation. Bakudo number 39. In Kozen, round lock fan. A swiftly rotating yellow spiritual power, shield unfolded in his palm. Crash. The tail hand struck, the massive impact shattering it. The fragments tainted by the red spiritual power emitted a sizzling corrosive hum. The spiritual power was being burned away. So Suke, Aizen stared thoughtfully. This was quite an interesting ability. The tailed beast's hand continued its rapid advance. Shinji Hirako sneered. So Suke, this is an opponent of similar level to you. Take it seriously. Don't disgrace the fifth division. He drew his sword, flashed in an instant, and slashed at the hands. The spiritual power was disrupted. Captain Hirako, be careful. Naruto's spiritual power is corrosive, Dean Haku quickly reminded. Shinji Hirako impatiently said, Do you think I'm blind? I noticed it a long time ago. His spiritual pressure can't damage my sword. As he spoke, Sosuke Aizen raised his right hand and chanted an incantation. Hato number 33. Sokatsui. Blue fire. Crash down. A faint, light blue spherical lightning bolt sped towards Naruto. Boom. An explosion ensued, rolling out clouds of fine smoke. The outer layer of the tailed beast cloak cracked, a small part shattered, injuring the flesh and blood beneath, rendering it a bloody mess. But... Both the wound and the outer layer of the red spiritual power cloak began to heal rapidly, visible to the naked eye. Strong defense, Sosuke Aizen concluded, and strong regenerative abilities. This kind of ability is too similar to a hollow. His eyes showed amazement. The minor injury made the berserk Naruto even more frenzied. For tails waved chaotically, rising from the ground, dancing wildly. Don't say something that even an idiot could see. Shinji Hirako raised his hand. He abandoned the incantation. Bakudo number 62. High Aparankin, 100 Steps Fence. 
Spiritual power congealed into pale, purple crystalline rods. Like rain, they rained down on Naruto, pinning his four massive tails and his limbs to the ground. They were, of course, corroded, emitting wisps of white smoke. But at this speed, it would take a long time to dissolve the seal. Not that hard to deal with. Shinji Hirako grinned mockingly. I thought it was a bigger problem and specially applied to the Central 46 to release the Zampakuto. Cut off his spiritual power. Without spiritual power, this state should... He didn't finish his sentence. Gurgling. That layer of spiritual power cloak started to boil. Spiritual power floating and surging. Naruto, whose limbs and tails were sealed, lifted his head and opened his mouth to an eerie, enormous size. Spiritual power continuously surged out of his body, gathering in front of his mouth, forming a core and absorbing nearby spiritual power, transforming into a massive black orb. It had immense spiritual pressure and a strange spiritual power fluctuation. That is, Dean Haku's eyes widened in disbelief, exclaiming, Siro, Sosuke, Aizen pushed up his glasses. Highly concentrated spiritual power, spherical, black in color, all very much aligned with the standard of a Siro. This was an ability only Minos Grande could use, not on the list of Shinigami skills. Interesting, Shinji Hirako grinned. But this isn't a Siro. Have your brains been pickled? Can't distinguish this spiritual pressure? But this level of fearfulness. Good thing I applied. He raised his sword and let go of his hand. The sword didn't fall. It floated in front of him. Collapse, Sakanade. The Zampakut OS form changed, the hilt expanding into a circular ring. With a clang, the sword started spinning. A peculiar fragrance wafted, instantly filling the noses of everyone in the gymnasium. The world turned upside down. In that instant, the tailed beast bomb was fired, but the target was wildly off, shooting high into the sky. Moments later, it exploded with a roar. Spiritual power swept, airwaves rolled. The already ravaged gymnasium couldn't withstand this fierce wind and finally collapsed. Shinji Hirako raised his hand, seizing the moment. Bakudo number four, Hainua, crawling rope. Golden spiritual power ropes flew from his palm, binding Naruto's fox head tightly. Sosuke Aizen was about to descend. Shinji Hirako stepped ahead, sealing Naruto's Hakusui and Siketsu, the two vital points within a soul's body that maintain spiritual power flow. Damaging them wouldn't endanger the soul's life, but would strip away all spiritual power. Similarly, sealing them would stop the flow of spiritual power. Without the support of spiritual power, the red cloak gradually receded, revealing the appearance of the host a blonde boy. The exhaustion of physical strength, spiritual power, and sanity made the still young Naruto fall into a deep sleep. Captain Hirako, how should we handle him? Sosuke Aizen asked with a smile. Dean Haku immediately spoke up. I had him attempt Shirkai. Shinji Hirako glanced at the two, picked up Naruto, and mockingly retorted, Are you out of your mind? Of course, send him to the fourth division. Such immense spiritual power, the nature of that spiritual power. Who knows what damage it has done to his body. He grinned sarcastically. Do you want to send him to the second division? Dean Haku nodded. Of course, we're heading to fourth division. Captain Hirako, let's go together. My colleagues and I are injured. Each squad in the Godii, 13, has its own responsibilities. The fourth division is responsible for medical treatment. Second squad handles prison interrogations, which is not a pleasant place to go. So, Suke, take this kid's sword, Shinji Hirako said, grabbing Naruto by the back of his collar like a fox cub. So, Suke Aizen, unbothered by the unceremonious command from his captain, walked over. He paused when he saw something half buried under the rubble. He turned his head, Excuse me, Dean Haku, which one of you was disarmed by Uzumaki Naruto? Dean Haku shook his head. No one. Why do you ask, Lieutenant Aizen? Sosuke Aizen bent down and picked up the objects from the ground. There are two swords here. One was dark red, and the other was a basic training sword. He reached out his left hand, grabbing the dark red one. Is this his sword? It's beautiful. And this one? He shook the one in his right hand, 
Isn't this one of yours? Dean Haku tilted his head. The least injured Shinigami responded. I'll investigate right away to see if any trainee's sword is missing. Dean Haku nodded, walked over, and took the training sword. He also picked up the nine-tailed demon fox sword. Lieutenant Eisen, I'll take care of the swords. Since we're all heading to 4th Division, I'll keep them for now. Sosuke Aizen smiled and nodded. Thank you, Dean Haku. The 4th Division barracks were in a more remote and quiet part of Siri IDI. Naruto's condition seemed somewhat unusual. Initially, it was Lieutenant Yamada Sinusuk who was in charge, but he soon called for the 4th Division Captain, Unohana Retsu. Outside the treatment room, more people gradually arrived. Shinigami from the Shino Academy came and went, reporting the results of their investigation on the missing training sword. 8th Division Captain Kairaka Shunsue, a man dressed in a cherry blossom pink haori and wearing a straw hat, looked even more carefree than Shinji Hirako. 1st Division Lieutenant Sasakai Chojiro, a white-haired man with a mustache, dressed in the most formal Shinigami attire. Is the treatment still ongoing? Kairaka Shunsue asked softly, his eyes resting on the sword in Dean Haku's hand. Does that sword put such a burden on its wielders? Shinji Hirako shook his head. It's not treatment. Captain Unohana said there's something unusual about that kid's body, and she's still investigating. Kairaka Shunsue was puzzled. Unusual? Shinji Hirako clicked his tongue. How should I know? I'm terrible at keto. As they spoke, the door opened. Yamada Sinusuk came out, respectfully facing the captains. Please, captains, come in. Captain Unoena has some things to say. They stepped inside. Just as Sosuke Aizen was about to follow, Shinji Hirako stopped him. Sosuke, you stay outside. We don't want anyone unauthorized entering. Sosuke Aizen stopped, not the least bit upset, his face still wearing a gentle smile. Yes, Captain Hirako. He had no complaints about the fact that the other two lieutenants could go in while he couldn't. At least not outwardly. Everyone entered. With a bang, Shinji Hirako shut the door heavily. Sosuke Aizen smiled, the light reflecting off his glasses obscuring his eyes. Inside the room, Naruto had already woken up. He lay on the bed, head lowered, looking dejected. Lieutenant Sasakai is here too? Unohana was surprised by his presence. Captain Commander Yamamoto is also concerned about this matter, Sasakai Chojiro replied frankly. Unohana nodded. Dean Haku, the most impatient among them and closest to Naruto, was also the most concerned. What condition does Naruto's body have that requires Captain Unohana to investigate for so long? Will his release affect his body? Unohana shook her head gently, her tone soft. Uzumaki's body is undamaged, just a bit unusual. She paused her gaze falling on Naruto's abdomen. Although Uzumaki has told me a lot, but to make it easier to understand, I'll explain from my perspective. His body seals an extremely powerful spiritual pressure, far greater than that of an ordinary captain, at least of second-class spiritual pressure level. Second-class spiritual pressure? And at least, is it a hollow? Shinji Hirako recalled his initial impression of Naruto and his hollow-like techniques speaking up immediately. Unohana shook her head again. It's not a hollow. Sinusuk and I have discussed Captain Hirako's and Dean Haku's impressions, although I haven't seen it myself. But that feeling is likely just an emotional influence. As she spoke, she remained calm and composed, her gaze briefly passing over her sword. The power within the vortex is not insubstantial, nor is it as evil as he describes. On the contrary, it is very pure, very, she hesitated, pondering the most precise description, a very life-affirming force, very suitable for healing arts. Even without performing spells, this spiritual power itself has a healing effect. He seemed to have some misunderstandings about it. Dean Haku was relieved and exhaled deeply. That's great. The person is fine, and the power is not a problem either. Shinji Hirako raised his eyebrow and looked back at the door. Is that... that thing? Shunsue Kairaku furrowed his brows and spoke seriously. Like Jushiro? He didn't make it too clear, but those who should understand could grasp his meaning. The Jushiro he referred to was his friend and fellow captain, the current captain of the 13th Division, Yukitake Jushiro. 
He is the least healthy among all the captains, being chronically ill. He almost died when he was young and was only saved by being parasitized by a fragment of the Soul King. No, it's not. Uno Hana, one of the oldest Shinigami, understood and shook her head in denial. Although their nature of existence is somewhat similar, they are different. The entity within the vortex is merely a being constructed purely of spiritual power. Dean Hako frowned. It sounds like a good thing, but why does Naruto lose his sanity when it's released? Because the sword hasn't fully accepted him yet, Uno Hana said softly. Dean Hako didn't understand and held up the two swords in his arms. But Naruto already knows its name, doesn't he? This rarely happens, Uno Hana said gently. The few cases are usually during Bankai. It's unprecedented to happen at Shirkai. The name can also be wrong. When a Shinigami can hear the voice of their Zampakuto, if the Zampakuto doesn't recognize the person or their power, it might not tell the user its real name. This way, although it can be released, only part of the Zampakuto's power or the wrong power can be used. Naruto's case is probably like this. His spiritual pressure is strong enough to wield the Zampakuto, but for some reason, the Zampakuto told him a wrong name. It could also be that the sword is too powerful, and even with fifth rank spiritual power, it's not enough to fully utilize it. Naruto listened intently. Many of these details were not mentioned to him by Captain Unohana earlier. Nine Tails? Is it the wrong name? The wrong name? Dean Haku looked bitter. Freewoodnovel.com. Uno Hanna continued. I think it might be related to another strange matter about the vortex. The power within him is both complete and incomplete. Even Shunsue Kairaka was puzzled by this. What does it mean, complete yet incomplete? Such a contradiction? This power should have another matching half, Uno Hanna said softly. Like a pair of objects missing its other half. Matching the other half. Dean Haku thought of something glanced at Shunsue Kairaku and raised the sword in his hand. Captain Uno Hanna, the investigation has just been completed and no one is missing an Asachi. This sword appeared beside Naruto along with Nine Tails. Could it be? Naruto actually possesses a pair of Zampakuto, the third one in the Soul Society. He has only awakened Nine Tails, and the other one has yet to awaken. Most Shinigami have only a single sword, but there are exceptions. Captain of the 8th Division, Shunsue Kairaku, and Captain of the 13th Division, Yukitake Jushiro. These fellow captains are very rare dual sword holders. Unoena nodded hesitantly. For now, that seems to be the explanation. She looked at the disappointed blonde boy on the bed. Vaguely, she felt something was off but couldn't pinpoint it. Dual swords was the best and only explanation. For some very special reason, Naruto has only released one of the dual swords, and the other remains sealed or hasn't been released for some other reason. What does Captain Kairaka think? Shunsue Kairaka shook his head. Both Jushiro and I released our dual swords simultaneously, and there are no other examples to refer to. I see. Unohana smiled. Naruto will stay in the fourth division for the time being. I'll monitor his physical condition closely. Saying this... She picked up a piece of paper from the bedside table, folded it, and handed it to Lieutenant Chojiro Sasakai. Please hand this to the Captain Commander. It records the seal on Naruto's body. It's a very peculiar spell, unlike any spells we've seen before. According to Naruto, it seems to be a form of spiritual power manipulation by humans in the living world, not of the Quincy type. She emphasized the word any. Chojiro Sasakai left. He had already received the answer the captain commander wanted. Don't blame yourself. Dean Haku walked to Naruto's bedside, placing two swords down and gently comforting. And don't resist this power. Although it's a bit unexpected, you did give us quite a beating. However, I'm just a minor lieutenant. The captains are much stronger than me, and they will surely resolve the major issues with your body. Naruto lifted his head. Their eyes met. Dean Haku was stunned. In those azure eyes, there was no retreat, fear, or terror as he imagined. The expression was firm and determined, and there was apology to himself and those teachers. He was much stronger than he thought. I am not resisting, it's just... Naruto clenched his fists. I wish I could be a bit better. 
You kid. Dean Haku chuckled, ruffling Naruto's hair playfully. Uno and Aretsu and Kairaka Shunsue were also surprised by his response. It didn't sound like something a young man, who was not even 20 in total before and after death, would say. It was a good answer. Mature, strong, reliable. They had enough patience and time to accompany a talented but immature young man in his growth. However, if he could mature earlier, it would obviously be better. This is what being a man is all about, Shinji Hirako said. Though his words were fine, they sounded slightly off in his mouth. I thought you would bury your face in Dean Haku's chest and cry. Naruto glanced at him, looking somewhat disdainful, then turned to Unohana Retsu. Captain Unohana, what should I do to control the power of the Nine Tails without losing control? You need to continue your Zampakuto training and see the soul of your Zampakuto. Unohana Retsu smiled warmly. Don't rush. You're still young. We can solve this problem slowly. Naruto's tone was calm as he replied, I've already done that. Unohana Retsu was surprised. I've already seen it. Naruto pointed to his heart. During my first Zampakuto training, Freeb novel does see him. How many did you see? Kairaku Shunsue asked. Naruto looked at him, puzzled. Of course, just one. Kairaku Shunsue mused. For those of us who use dual swords, it's different from those who use single swords. The number of Zampakuto spirits, like the swords, is two. You can see it in the names. Like my Kaden Kayakatsu and Jushiro Sojio no Kotawari. The Nine Tails might not be a false name, but perhaps incomplete, as Captain Unohana said, lacking half. Two. Naruto tilted his head. But in that underground sewer, there was only the Nine Tails Fox. I think the reason you can only release one sword might be because the one you have released is too powerful, Kairaka Shunsue continued. He raised both hands, spiritual power gathering. In both hands, a ball of light appeared, identical in size and strength. For Jushiro and me, the strength of the two swords is equal, allowing them to shine equally. Just now, Captain Unohana said the power sealed inside you has at least the strength of a second-class spiritual pressure. And you, Uzumaki, have only fourth or fifth rank spiritual pressure. That is like this. The ball of light in Kairaka's left hand grew large, emitting a scorching, dazzling light, while the right-hand ball remained unchanged, seemingly swallowed by the left-hand light, making it indistinguishable without effort. What do you see? Naruto, not foolish but very intelligent, replied, The light of the nine tails is too strong, overshadowing the other Zampakuto's light, causing me to ignore it. Exactly. Kairaka Shunsue waved his hand, dispersing the spiritual power. So, Uzumaki, what you need to do now is continue your Zampakuto training and find your other sword. This might balance the Nine Tails' power or complete its name. Naruto nodded thoughtfully. To find another inner power, we will also figure out the strange curse mark on you as soon as possible. Unohana smiled. Don't worry too much. Naruto looked at them, then at Dean Haku. He let out a long breath, releasing the depression in his heart. Indeed, the Soul Society was more comfortable. He stayed in the fourth division for half a month, and after Uno Hanaretsu confirmed that his emotions wouldn't affect his future, he was sent back to the Shino Academy. Naruto wanted to help Uno Hanaretsu solve the curse mark issue, but he knew nothing about sealing techniques. In the textbook of the Ninja Academy, only the most basic knowledge is included. Sealing techniques? That area is a blind spot. Returning to school. The process for early graduation has also begun. Naruto needs to complete the entire six-year curriculum in less than a year. In addition to the basic four subjects of swordsmanship, zanjutsu, hand-to-hand -hand combat, hakuda, shuunpa hoho, there are also some lessons related to shinigami duties, such as secret maneuvers, rescue and medical aid, intelligence patrol, combat purification. These are the most troublesome courses for students who are graduating early. But for Naruto, these courses didn't pose too much trouble. Many of them were similar to the content learned at the Ninja Academy. Of course, Naruto has more to learn than just these. Captain Unohana was specifically instructed to add a healing arts course for Naruto. Usually, the Shino Academy only teaches basic healing arts. 
Only after confirming the aptitude and being assigned to the 4th Division after graduation would one formally begin studying it. Nardo wanted to refuse, but whenever he tried to say it, he felt a spine-chilling sense of danger. Captain Unohana was obviously so gentle, so beautiful. Naruto also successfully learned the multiple shadow clone technique obtained in Kanoha. Although he didn't like Saratobi Hiruzen much anymore, he had to admit that his judgment was very good, as this technique suited him well. Everything was getting better, except for the other sword, which wasn't progressing much. Every time he practiced Blades in, he could only hear the voice of the Nine Tails. Naruto even tried asking the Nine Tails if it was hiding its true name. But whenever this question came up, the Nine Tails would become uncontrollably angry and chase him out. After several attempts, the Nine Tails finally calmed down and spoke to Naruto. Nine Tails is indeed not its real name, but it refused to tell Naruto. Half a year passed like this. The Shinigami Naruto saw the most was the vice captain of the 5th Division, Sosuke Aizen. He was a very gentle person, coming over almost weekly to guide Naruto in his keto practice, greatly improving Naruto's skills in this area. However, their meetings were not long. Each time Sosuke Aizen came, shortly after, Captain Shinji Hiroko would follow. Although Sosuke Aizen was very gentle. For some reason, Naruto preferred Shinji Hiroko, who always cursed and acted weirdly. Next was Captain Unohana of the 4th Division who took good care of Naruto. One day, Naruto was still training alone in the gym. Dean Haku came to find him. Naruto, a captain is looking for you. Come with me. Naruto stopped training. Puzzled, Captain? If it were Uno Inaretsu or Kairaku Shunsue, Dean Haku wouldn't specifically use the term captain. It's the new captain of the 12th division, Yurahara Kisuk, Dean Haku said. He seems to have researched something, it's said that he's very capable, and he has good relations with the Shahoin clan. He might be able to solve your problem. They walked to the office. After knocking and pushing the door open, Yo, Uzumaki boy, I've heard a lot about you, but this is the first time we've met. The voice came first. Nardo looked over. It was a man with short pale yellow hair, draped in a captain's haori. Unlike the captains he had seen before. Though those had their own unique characteristics, they undoubtedly had the presence of a captain, but this one had a weak-looking face, giving a feeling of being frail and easily bullied. There was not just one captain in the room. Also present was a dark-skinned beauty sitting cross-legged on the table, yawning. The pale yellow-haired man walked over. Let me introduce myself. I am Yurahara Kisuk, captain of the 12th Division and head of the Technological Development Bureau. And this, well, he spoke with some disdain. You might as well pretend she doesn't exist. Yurahara, you jerk. The dark-skinned beauty jumped over and punched him hard. Introduce me properly. Yurahara Kasuk held his head. This is Shahoin Yuruchi, captain of the second division. She's very interested in your fox's condition. Besides, we'll need her help for some upcoming matters. As he spoke, he paused, as if the next words involved his most confident field and his demeanor became more imposing. I have some clues about your seal and trouble, but it's not convenient to discuss it here. If you don't mind, could you come with us? The Technological Development Bureau is a new department. It was established only after Yurahara Kasuk took office. There are people here who are even more eccentric than Shinji Hirako. People with horns growing out of their heads, wearing strange golden masks and dancing around. These are considered normal. They barely resemble humans. Naruto even saw a green catfish sitting in front of a computer operating it. Their attitude towards Yurahara Kasuk is very strange. Frubnov.com There is no respect typically shown by subordinates to their captain. They are busy with their own tasks. Yurahara Kasuk didn't bother greeting these people either and led Naruto and Shahoin Yuruchi to the deepest level of the Technological Development Bureau. A vast, empty, desolate place. Naruto was somewhat surprised. There was such a large underground space, even with the sky. It felt like another world. He was also puzzled. Why bring him here? This place looked more like a training ground. If it was for a body checkup, the upper floors with sophisticated instruments would obviously be more suitable. Uzumaki, let me introduce this place to you. 
Urahara Kasuk spread his arms, his tone proud. This is the first achievement I made after establishing the Technological Development Bureau. Here, we can evade any monitoring from Siri IDI, including the restrictions from Central 46 on us captains. Even a Bankai wouldn't be noticed by outsiders. Naruto frowned. This doesn't sound like it's for research. The seal on you is very intriguing. Urahara Kasuk approached. Whether it's a Shinigami, Hollow, or Quincy, even the powers used by human mediums in the real world are completely different. Urahara Kasuk paused and examined Naruto. He originally didn't plan to interact with Naruto. He saw Uno and Aretz's request for help as just ordinary colleague assistance. But as his research into the seal deepened, and from the information he gathered about Naruto from Shinji Hirako, he couldn't resist the urge to study the mystery within Naruto. This had a unique resemblance to a kind of technology he was currently developing. He continued, that kind of technique's control over spiritual power is general. Only a superficial application, but its ingenuity in physical development is extraordinary. The effects it shows are no less than our Shinigami techniques. A very unique perspective and approach. An area we haven't explored before. Unfortunately, I only have the transcripts given to me by Captain Unohana. Naruto lifted his shirt. Do you want to see? I don't mind. No, no, no. Urahara Kasuk shook his head quickly. Those external forms are meaningless. I want to understand the operating core. So, fight. Naruto uttered a bewildered, ah, the transition too fast for him to react. Fight. Release your sword and fight. Urahara Kasuk's voice was firm, decisive, and enthusiastic until you lose control. I will record all the data to analyze the seal on your spiritual power. Naruto hesitated. Shahoin Yuruchi pressed down on Naruto's head. Kid, losing control means you aren't familiar enough with your power. Use it more, and you'll get familiar. Don't worry about hurting us. Even though Kasuk looks like this, he is still a captain. Urahara Kasuk smiled. And here, we are not restricted. Naruto hesitated no longer, nodded, and drew his sword. Then please, Captain Urahara, Captain Shahoin. He chanted the release. The ominous, fierce spiritual power of the Nine Tails surged forth. Soon, for Tails appeared and he lost his rationality, going berserk and mad. When he woke up again, Naruto found himself in a hot spring. Shahoin Yuruchi, naked with a few bruises and scars on her body, greeted him cheerfully when she saw he was awake. Yo, woke up? You sure it hard? She was very casual about it. Naruto, embarrassed, blushed, and averted his gaze. He knew a similar technique to what Yuruchi was displaying now, but doing it himself was one thing. Soaking in the same hot spring pool with her was another. A young man had never seen such a scene. Urahara Kasuk was squatting by the hot spring, watching Naruto, his eyes glowing. Your body has almost recovered. Can you release it again later? We collected some interesting data, but it's not comprehensive. Shahoin Yuruchi unhappily splashed a handful of hot water over. Consider me, my stamina can't match this kid's. That day, Naruto lost control and released four times. Urahara Kasuk was satisfied and arranged with Naruto to conduct such tests twice a week. As for the compensation, it would be the entire research result on the seal and Shahoin Yuruchi's hand to hand combat, Hakuta, classes. As one of the captains, she was the strongest in terms of physical skills, and her guidance greatly benefited Naruto. Two months later, Urahara Kasuk produced the first results. On top of Naruto's existing seal, he added two more incantations. The effects were remarkable. They allowed Naruto to maintain his sanity in his four-tailed form, and even further, only losing control when he reached the five-tailed state. The five-tailed form brought a huge surprise to Urahara Kasuk. A white bone mask appeared on the face of the out-of-control Naruto. At first, he thought it was a hollow's mask, but after cutting off some parts with Yurichi's help, he realized it wasn't. It was purely bone completely different from the power of a hollow. However, it still provided new ideas for his research. But the power of the incantation seemed limited to this. No matter how many support techniques he added, 
It was impossible to keep Naruto sane in the five-tailed form. Urahara Kasuk was anxious. He was eager to see what the six-tailed, seven-tailed, and even nine-tailed forms looked like. This sword named Nine Tails was stronger than he had imagined. During this period, most of the time, it was Shihoin Yuruchi who fought with Naruto, but occasionally, Urahara would join to collect data. Both came to the same conclusion. The five-tailed Naruto had the level of the top vice-captains. If he could reach the six-tailed form, he might have the combat power of an ordinary captain, roughly equivalent to the level of the newly appointed captain, Mugiru Makensei. By this analogy, the limit of the initial release could potentially place him among the top captains. However, no matter how anxious Urahara was, he understood his limits. Whenever Naruto was on the verge of further losing control and displaying another tail, Urahara would decisively step into seal and cut off the spiritual power flow. Research was conducted on the premise of ensuring Naruto's safety and also ensuring the safety of himself and Yuruchi. Time flew by in training, learning, and research. At the school's training ground, Sosuke Aizen was teaching Naruto higher-level Kido spells above number 50 and suddenly remarked, it's graduation season again. Naruto was a bit dazed and replied, yes, graduation season. He looked into the distance where the cherry blossoms were blooming again. Have you decided which division you want to join? Aizen asked again. Naruto shook his head. Isn't the school responsible for the allocation after registration? That's for regular students, Aizen smiled. You're different. You're a genius. Even Captain Hirako wants to recruit you. Naruto pondered, 5th Division, huh? But speaking of which, Naruto, are you going to the living world with the 6th year students for soul burials in a few days? Aizen changed the subject, seemingly not wanting to make Naruto feel pressured or conflicted. Naruto nodded and grinned, yes. Dean Haku told me, Soul Burial is the ceremony where Shinigami consoles and sends souls to the Soul Society. It's a skill every Shinigami must master. Naruto was no exception. He was looking forward to the internship in the living world. Perhaps this could solve the mystery of why he inexplicably traveled between Kanoha and the Soul Society. The ceremony was simple, and the internship in the living world was more of a symbolic gesture representing that the students were finally stepping out of the school and becoming independent, formal Shinigamis. Best of luck, Aizen offered his blessings. But given that you were personally taught by Captain Urahara and Captain Shihoin, I'm sure you'll be fine. Naruto's smile widened. And also the teachings of Vice Captain Aizen. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't have believed I could learn so many advanced Kido spells. Just call me Aizen. We are friends after all. Aizen's tone was gentle and slow. I'm just a mere vice captain. How can I compare to the two captains? But, Naruto, you've improved much faster recently than before. Did those two captains teach you something special? Naruto scratched his cheek. Sorry, Aizen, Captain Urahara told me not to tell anyone about that matter. Aizen apologized. I overstepped. The guidance from the captains is precious. You must cherish it well. The internship will take place in one week. There will be no teachers accompanying. A team will be led by the outstanding students from the sixth grade. Siri IDI is silent and profound, and the Senkaman standing in the corner is even more so. A huge open-air arena-like venue. A straight, wide, turquoise road leads to a large, lacquered red door inscribed with golden characters. This is the portal from the Soul Society to the human world. At the starting point of the road, this batch of intern students gathered. An older male student spoke. This time, going to the human world, there's no need to be nervous. We're heading to a town called Akita, not a high spiritual area. Even if we encounter hollows, they'll just be some newborn, weak ones. The spirits for the Kanso, Spirit Burial, the Station Shinigami, have already prepared for us. He continued introducing. Naruto, feeling restless, didn't listen very attentively. Akita? Never heard of it. Doesn't sound like a ninja village. Just an ordinary town in the country? He wasn't sure if it was within the Land of Fire. The Land of Fire is the country that rules over Kanoha. Other countries like the Land of Water and the Land of Wind. He had only heard of, not familiar with. While thinking, 
The upperclassman's speech reached the end. After completing the spirit burial, please return to the arrival point immediately. The giant red door also quietly and gently opened to both sides. A gentle white light burst forth. The upperclassman raised his hand, and a black swallowtail butterfly landed on his index finger. Follow the team closely. In the Dong Eye, without the guidance of the hell butterfly, it's very dangerous. In the human world, under the bright night sky, in the forest, first, a white that flickered, then expanded in the blink of an eye, unfolding like a four-pointed star. The Ukiyo-e gate appeared in the white light and slowly opened. A group of Shinigami trainees walked out from it. They were chattering. Naruto looked around. The trees were sparse, not enough to cover the sky. This shouldn't be the land of fire. The trees around Kanoha are tall and lush, but these are scattered, only at the level of saplings. All right, let's begin. The upperclassman clapped his hands lightly. The other trainees scattered to find their spirits. Naruto did not move. The upperclassman asked, uzumaki Kuin, what's wrong? Senpai, which country is this? Naruto asked curiously. He perked up his ears, ready to hear an answer like land of wind or land of lightning. The upperclassman was puzzled. Why do you want to know? This is Japan. Shinigami generally have little interest in the human world. Even most of the civilian Shinigami from Rakangai are usually second-generation spirits, that is, children born from the Union of Spirits. But considering this famous junior from the Shino Academy is one of the rare types who possessed immense spiritual power upon dying in the human world, it was not surprising he asked such a question. Japan? Naruto was stunned. Is it close to the land of fire? This was a country name he had never heard of. The upperclassman blinked. Land of fire? Sorry, Uzumaki Kuin. I've never heard of that country. Naruto widened his eyes. The unease he felt before the internship bloomed at this moment. How can it be? The land of fire is the most powerful country. The upperclassman smiled slightly. Most powerful? I'm not very knowledgeable about the human world, but the most powerful country among humans doesn't seem to have that name. Naruto reluctantly nodded. Okay, I understand. Maybe the land of fire is just the name of a village, the upperclassman said, gently comforting. You were quite young when you came to the Soul Society. Perhaps you remembered wrong. Naruto gave him a grin. Yes, thank you, senpai. He was the last to leave. He did not immediately go to find the spirit he needed to perform the spirit burial on. The identity of Shinigami brought him many conveniences. Ordinary people without spiritual power could neither see nor sense him allowing him to move freely among human dwellings, reading books and searching for information. The scenery here was beautiful. Seas of clouds, forests, hot springs. Naruto had no interest in these. He soon found a world map in a large local household. Japan was a small piece on the map. The land was vast compared to others, but none had the name Land of Fire. He also found traces of ninjas, but... The impression Naruto had of ninjas was quite different. Although they engaged in activities like spying, intelligence gathering, and assassination, the ninjas in this world were ordinary people. They neither possessed chakra, nor had they mastered spiritual power. They were distinguished by factions, not villages. All this information combined could only lead to one conclusion. Kanoha was not the living world equivalent of the Soul Society. This place was a completely different time and space. He couldn't find his parents in the Soul Society. Naruto sat on a tree branch. He looked at a lonely crescent moon in the sky, half obscured by thick clouds. He felt a kinship with it. In front of the portal, the students were gradually returning. Soul burials were not difficult, but sometimes the soul's locations were not fixed, making it a task to find them. This really tested one's ability to master Ryuraku. Has Uzumaki not returned yet? As most people gathered, the upperclassman student looked around, noticing the absence of a distinctive blonde figure in the crowd. Not yet. I saw Uzumaki to the east. He seemed to be still searching for souls. The upperclassman student frowned. Restless souls that were hard to find indeed posed a problem. Many souls turned into hollows because they moved around randomly and the Shinigami couldn't find them in time. But, 
With Uzumaki Naruto's abilities, it shouldn't take this long. Whether it was the dean or the teachers, they all said Naruto now had the skills of a high-ranking lieutenant. He shouldn't have to worry. But the expression Naruto had when he asked questions earlier made him feel concerned. No matter how strong, he was still just a child under 50 years old. The upperclassman student hesitated whether to suggest going to look for Naruto. At that moment, several strong, evil spiritual pressures emerged nearby. He was startled and looked around nervously. Two ferocious and terrifying monsters, faces covered with bone masks, suddenly ran and flew out of the forest, clearly targeting this group of Shinigami. Be careful, Hollow's attacking, an upperclassman shouted. The students panicked. They had little experience fighting Hollow's. Hato number four, Baikurai, Pale Lightning. But some upperclassmen remained calm, reacted quickly, recited incantations, and cast spells. However, the flash of white lightning struck one of the hollows, but it couldn't even pierce its skin. The hollow laughed mockingly, as if to ridicule how weak this attack was. It's an high-level hollow. An upperclassman student couldn't suppress the tremor in his voice. Quick call for help? No use. Another shook his head. Holding a trembling held butterfly, spiritual communication is interrupted. We can't send for help. Hearing this, many turned to look. Interrupted? How could it be interrupted? During internships, students stayed in constant contact with the Soul Society, with no exceptions. Delicious spiritual power. In an instant, a hollow rushed to the front of the crowd, grabbed a Shinigami, and spoke, its voice greedy. It was craving food. The upperclassman student drew his sword, fearlessly charging to slash its arm. Several other upperclassmen reacted, chanting together. Hato number 12. Fushibai. Ambush flare. Thick orange flames surged, binding the hollow's arm, forcing it to drop the person it was holding. Sizzling burns produced white smoke. But these injuries were not fatal, only causing the hollow pain. It struggled fiercely and easily broke the flame binds. With another swipe of its claw, the upperclassman student in close combat was sent flying. The hollow crouched, lunging forward to bite him. Senpai, someone cried out in horror, voice hoarse, filled with grief. At the critical moment, a ball of crimson spiritual power struck, knocking the hollow over and exploding. The hollow roared in pain. Thick black liquid dripped from its body. The upperclassmen recognized it as Hato number 31. Chicago, Red Fire Cannon. One they couldn't cast. Who was the caster? The answer immediately came to mind. Uzumaki, someone shouted. They followed the spiritual pressure. A blonde boy stood on a tree. The crescent moon behind him creates a softened backdrop. Sorry, got distracted. Came back late. He slowly relaxed his hand. Eyes sharp. A hollow. My first time fighting such a creature. So let's... Naruto said, drawing nine tails, swinging the blade forward. Blow off some steam. In a flash step, he vanished. The students only saw a streak of golden light pass before their eyes. Next, the hollow's body split in half. The students realized belatedly, with a start, especially those who had previously launched an attack. Clearly, the high-level hollow that even their combined efforts struggled to contend with, whose defenses were almost impenetrable by their spells, had been easily dealt with by Naruto. With just one slash, the blonde boy raised his head and looked at another hollow, speaking calmly. Is this a hollow? It didn't seem as powerful as the teachers described in class. Upon hearing this, the upperclassmen students lowered their heads in shame. Sorry, we were so weak that we made you overestimate the hollow's strength. The hollow roared, tense and hovering in midair. It sensed the power of the Shinigami before it. Yet, it showed no intention of retreating or escaping. Can it fly? Naruto focused on its flapping wings and raised his hand. Shinigami have the ability to hover. Advanced Shinigami can spread their spiritual power in the sky, walking on it to achieve a flight-like effect. Naruto had sufficient spiritual pressure, but had not yet learned this skill. Bakudo number 4. Hainawa, crawling rope, a spell cast without incantation. A golden light rope shot from his palm, instantly flying out and binding the hollow's legs. The hollow struggled, 
its wings flapping vigorously. In terms of strength, Naruto, still a minor, was at a disadvantage. But its thoughts were just that thoughts. Naruto cast without an incantation. Hato number 11. Suzuri Raiden found lightning. Lightning erupted from the golden rope, crackling and exploding on the hollow's body, numbing it, draining its strength. It wobbled, losing balance. With a slight pull, Naruto caused the hollow to fall, and with another slash, he cleaved it in two. Black, viscous liquid fell to the ground, decomposing into basic spiritual particles. The crisis was resolved. The students let out a sigh of relief. Thank goodness for you, Uzumaki. We were lucky you were here this time. One upperclassman, who had been captured and almost killed, expressed his gratitude. His words opened the floodgates for the others, who began loudly expressing their relief and admiration after their narrow escape. A once-in-a-century genius can cast Suzuri Raiden without incantation. Well done. Naruto smiled shyly. Are there any students who haven't returned yet? Throughout his life, he had never received such straightforward, enthusiastic praise, and he felt a bit embarrassed. An upperclassman stood on tiptoes, counting heads. Everyone's back, no one is missing. Then let's return first, Naruto said softly, to avoid further complications. Before he could finish speaking, an upperclassman gripped his sword, staring ahead in terror. The Sinkaman won't open. How is that possible? Another upperclassman instinctively retorted, drawing his own sword. He inserted it into the void beside him. Open the gate. The sword twisted like a key, but nothing happened. It was confirmed. The gate was sealed. Most of the students turned pale, panicking. They had lost contact with the Soul Society. High in the sky, a brown-haired man wearing glasses chuckled softly. Such beautiful keto. But this won't do, Naruto-chan. What I want to see from you is much more than this. With a crisp snap of his fingers, the night sky was torn apart, revealing creases. He gazed intently at the crowd below. Show me something more interesting. Amid the panicking crowd, Naruto remained the calmest. Despite being the smallest, his words carried the most weight. It must be the work of those two hollows. The Academy and the Godii, 13 can't reach us. They're the ones most worried. I think they'll soon. A sharp scream interrupted him. Someone raised a hand, pointing to the sky. Visible spatial ripples. A giant hand with sharp nails tore through the night, revealing the dark, chaotic void. What is that? Someone swallowed hard, seeking help dryly. A huge figure always carries immense pressure, not to mention the terrifying spiritual pressure it exuded. A white skeletal face peeked out from the parted sky curtain, with an exposed, concave row of grinding teeth and a long nose sharp as a saw. A terrifying creature. Minos Grande. A student stepped back half a step. That's a Minos Grande, a monster only captains and vice captains can handle. Naruto looked up. The textbook described this Minos Grande as a product formed by the amalgamation of hundreds of hollows. It sniffed at something, struggling to inch into the present world through the gap. It turned its head, and two hollow, dark eyes aimed at the crowd. Inside the empty eye sockets, only swirling black spiritual power moved. Yet, it was evident that it had a fanatical appetite. It wanted to devour this group of people. How could we encounter such a creature here? Someone despaired, collapsing to the ground. Someone trembled, trying to draw their sword. But under such spiritual pressure and fear, even standing was an exhausting task. Naruto stepped forward, his spiritual pressure burst, soaring skyward. The crowd suddenly felt relieved. They looked up. In front, the blonde youth turned back. You all move to a safe place. I will deal with it. The upperclassman immediately objected. No, Uzumaki, even if you are a genius, this is a Minos Grande. It's very powerful. Naruto interrupted softly, but firmly. Is there any other way? The upperclassman gritted his teeth, his fists clenched tight, turning red. At this moment, he finally understood what the teacher occasionally said to them. Hurry up and get stronger. Power, if you were strong enough now. How could he let someone so much younger stand in front of him? We will fight together. 
He drew his sword with trembling hands. Even though Naruto bore most of the spiritual pressure in front, the slight leakage was still too heavy for them, the ungraduated Shinigami. We can't leave you behind. As he spoke, he paused, staring at Naruto in surprise. At such a critical moment, he actually smiled. From now on, call me Naruto. Naruto said frankly, smiling brightly. Do you think I will become a high-ranking lieutenant after graduation? This question was somewhat inappropriate, but the upperclassmen didn't hesitate. Of course, Naruto turned back, looking at the Minos Grande almost fully emerging. Then let me exercise the authority of a lieutenant in advance. I order you to retreat and protect the students of Shino Academy. The upperclassman gritted his teeth. Naruto raised his sword, the red tassel swaying, his voice firm and powerful. Don't worry, I am very strong. Next time we meet, stay alive. The upperclassman controlled his intense emotions. Naruto responded without hesitation. Of course. The dark red sword was called by name. Spiritual power bloomed. He entered the one-tail transformation state. He donned a layer of lava-like, semi-transparent red spiritual power cloak. For no reason, everyone felt a heavy heart, emotions affected. Feewind.com Some, who could instinctively hold back, couldn't help but cry out loud. Is that Uzumaki's sword? Someone stared back intently while escaping. Such a powerful and beautiful sword. Naruto's ear twitched. Beautiful? It's the first time someone praised it this way. The Minos Grande fully broke free. It lowered its head. Its frenzied spiritual power gathered in front of its mouth, flickering deep red. Naruto stared. That was... The technique Urahara Kasuk said was very similar to the tailed beast bomb he could use in four-tail transformation. The Ciro? He bent his legs and sprang forward to kill. Spiritual pressure drove the blade, slashing the Minos Grande's arm, not cutting it off. But it left a deep wound, blood spurted, spiritual power dissipated. The Minos Grande felt pain. The Ciro in front of its mouth didn't fully condense, dispersing with a wailing cry. It wasn't that hard to deal with. As the book said, vast spiritual pressure but low intelligence, slow movements. In battle, these two are original sins. Ordinary Shinigami couldn't deal with it because they couldn't break its defense. But as long as you could break the defense, it posed no threat. Not far away, a man with flat glasses stood in the air, observing closely, but neither the Minos Grande nor Naruto noticed him. Inside Naruto, the nine tails bristled. It sensed an extremely powerful force coveting, making it anxious, reminding it of those three men. The Minos Grande is really a useless thing. This won't do. I saw you with four tails that day. Then let's do this. He waved his hand. In the sky, several pitch black holes twisted open. Dozens of Minos flew out from the black void. Not towards Naruto, but towards the fleeing Shinigami students. The man murmured to himself his tone joyful. Newly acquainted friends under attack. Uzumaki Naruto, what will you do? The horde covered the sky and earth. Each one was no smaller than the two that had just appeared. They were ferocious and malevolent, attacking the students with greedy appetite. The crowd panicked. Several upperclassmen students turned around, drew their swords, their faces still bearing traces of fear, but their steps were firm and unyielding. Naruto crouched on the Minos Grande's shoulder, unperturbed. For other Shinigami, a Zampakuto that is not suited for group attacks might lack effective means against many enemies. But Naruto was different. Currently, apart from the tailed beast bomb in his four tails form, the nine tails indeed had no group attack capability. However, he was not short of effective methods. If one isn't enough, then call out more people. He threw his sword high into the air. Naruto raised his hands, joining his index and ring fingers together, forming a cross sign with his right hand vertical and his left hand horizontal. Multiple shadow clone technique. With a puff of white smoke, dozens of Naruto's appeared on the Minos Grande's shoulder. They leaped down, chasing the Minos Grande horde, each holding a dark red sword. In the sky, the man's expression changed. 
The anticipated surprise blossomed at this moment. The ability of a Zampakuto? Or is it a new technique? He watched Naruto, who remained on the Minos Grande's shoulder and grabbed his sword, raising his hands to form the same cross sign. Of course, he did not channel spiritual power, but merely memorized the gesture. Each one is corporeal. Each possesses the same spiritual power. But the overall spiritual pressure intensity hasn't changed. It's distributed among each clone. Interesting ability. With the spiritual pressure reduced, the clones could handle the Minos Grande Horde without issue. However, Naruto struggled against the Minos Grande. He released the third tail, causing effective damage. The Minos Grande howled in pain. Several times, it attempted to tear the sky and summon the Garganta to escape. Whether Naruto or the Shinigami trainees, their spiritual power indeed seemed delicious, but the instinctive sense of danger was enough for it to abandon the food. But the man orchestrating this drama did not allow it to exit the stage. He eagerly recorded everything. Such immense spiritual pressure, even when divided into so many parts, it can still harm the Minos Grande. But it's still not enough. These aren't enough to please me. He stretched out his hand, personally tearing the sky, as if the theater master, opening the stage for a grand and luxurious performance. A second Minos Grande was released. Along with it, another group of Minos Grandes swarmed out like bees, buzzing and charging at the crowd. The unique, rotting spiritual pressure of the Minos Grandes consumed the space. The crescent moon vanished, shrouded by dark clouds. Naruto gritted his teeth. Another Minos Grande was not a big deal. But he glanced sideways at the crowd. Those people were no longer panicking, perhaps because Naruto's clones were nearby, or perhaps they had become accustomed to the pressure. Many stood up, drawing their swords, casting Kido assisting the clones in battle. Though their efforts were minimal, they were not lacking in courage. Yet, the appearance of more Minos Grandes still brought despair to their faces. Naruto took a deep breath and raised his sword. More clones were needed. Greater spiritual pressure was needed. He did not favor the Four Tails form. Even though with Urahara Kasuk's developed support seal, he could maintain his own will. But the feeling of being wrapped in negative emotions was still unpleasant. The fourth red velvet ribbon split out, enormous and overwhelming spiritual pressure rolling out. Dark red spiritual power armor grew from his feet. He opened his mouth and swallowed the sword. The fourth tail emerged. The other clones followed suit, transforming as well, and more shadow clones were summoned, pouncing on the Minos Grande horde. Naruto stood, looking somewhat strange, like an upright fox. He drew another sword and leaped high. Two tailed beast hands shot out from his body, grabbing the heads of the two Minos Grandes. With a powerful pull, they toppled like towers crashing into each other. In the air, Naruto manipulated the four tails, curving them towards his mouth. A cluster of spiritual particles quickly coalesced into a pitch black sphere and was expelled. It wasn't very large. Naruto, prioritizing speed, sacrificed some power making it only the size of two fists. It didn't spin and was simply hurled straight. It collided with the heads of two large hollows. The small sphere exploded with a roar, the blast wave rolling out, a gust of wind scattering the dust. Both of the large hollow's heads were obliterated in the explosion. Quick and decisive, Naruto landed on all fours, then quickly stood up, containing his spiritual power as he recited an incantation. This was one of Urahara Kisuk's achievements. It allowed him to suppress his spiritual power. The fourth tail retracted, its dark red color fading back to a semi-transparent state, while the three tails behind him swayed. In the sky, a man reached out his hand, feeling the hot wind touch his palm. His flat glasses seemed to capture the flash of the explosion. Was this the ability that wasn't used that day? Even with such a divided amount of spiritual pressure, it still had this kind of destructive power. Not a Shinigami, nor a Hollow. He remembered the incantation. This would be an effective breakthrough. Let's leave it at this for now. They're about to break through. He waved his hand. The sky gradually concealed his figure. 
Unexpected events are gems given by the world. They will shine brightly under the sun. This time, I am pleased. Naruto, will you be pleased? Naruto had no time to ponder these words. He dealt with the hollows while keeping an eye on the sky, worried that a third large hollow might appear. But the incident subsided. The hollows finally knew to flee, opening a garganta and disappearing. Those who didn't escape in time were swiftly dispatched by Naruto. An upperclassman pointed behind him. Great, the Senkamen is open. The floating Ukiyo-e gate spread wide. As soon as a crack appeared, two figures in white Hayori rushed out, followed by several black-clad figures. The hollow's spiritual pressure pervaded the land, making the newly arrived Shinigami tense. But they soon realized there were only a few hollows left, being chased and cut down by a blonde boy enveloped in red spiritual power. Naruto, Shihoin Yuruchi sighed in relief, calling out. Her expression was serious as she stared at the dissipating massive corpse not far away. Another captain turned his head, his blonde hair swinging, Shinji Hirako. His naturally stern face looked even more intimidating when stern. He said nothing, glancing at the large hollow before quickly looking away, then fixating on the man with flat glasses who followed him. This man had been by his side the entire time, but for some reason, Shinji Hirako felt this matter was somehow connected to this man. Yuruchi, you're here? Naruto waved after slashing the last hollow, dismissing his clone. A large hollow? Yuruchi pointed at the corpse. Naruto nodded. Yes, two large hollows. Large hollows. Yuruchi's brows furrowed tighter. Any casualties? Unlike ordinary hollows, frubnovel.com, large hollows typically don't come to the human world. They only operate in Hueco Mundo, their own realm. Naruto didn't respond. He didn't know much about this. An upperclassman beside him grinned, his voice tired but excited. Luckily, we had Naruto. He not only fought the large hollows, but also helped us fend off the high level hollows, at least several hundred. Without Naruto, we might all be dead. Some students were injured, but Naruto could heal them in time, saving their lives. The members of the second division showed no emotion. They were part of the stealth force. The fifth division Shinigami, who came with Shinji Hirako, were astonished, looking at Naruto in disbelief. Killing large hollows? Protecting students amidst hundreds of hollows? Could this still be done by a kid who hasn't graduated yet? In their hearts, even as high-ranking lieutenants, they weren't confident in such a task. No one died. These words visibly relaxed the two captains. This was the best outcome. What's with the Senkamen? Naruto asked. Yuruchi shook her head. Still not clear. Yurahara is working on it. Let's head back. The fourth division is all set.